Very good morning, boys and girls. Hope that you are doing really, really good here this week. We are doing chapel again this way just to be as safe as we can to have everybody in our own classrooms and uh, do chapel through a video this week. So pretty soon we'll be able to be back together, we hope, if everything goes well. But I appreciate your patience with us and appreciate you listening to me this morning as we do chapel this way. And I want to ask you the really, really important question that you see on the screen. What does it mean to be saved? Last week when I showed you the uh, little trick I did with the uh, candles and the pennies, and I talked about the fact that sin had covered us and that Jesus had to come and he paid the penalty for our sins, and that's what allows us to be saved. Well, that's the most important thing that will ever happen to any of us is the day that we get saved, the day that we come to know Christ and that we know uh, that he has saved our soul. So since that's such an important time for each one of us, I want to talk about it today. And this may be a thing that's already happened for you or a thing maybe that will happen for you one day when uh, God's ready for it, but it's just something that I want you to be thinking about and talk to your teachers, talk to your parents, talk to your pastors about as you think more about these things. What does it mean for us to be saved? Well, first thing it means is that God is in charge. We must know that God created everything. He made you. He made me. He's in charge of everything that exists on the planet. Uh, from the very beginning in Genesis, it says that God created all things. The book of Colossians tells us that he holds the whole planet together. He keeps everything together by all things uh, are created by him and through him and for him. So we know that first. God rules. Now, if God made everything, is in charge of everything, that means he also gets to make the rules. He gets to decide what's right and what's wrong. He gets to tell us what we should do and what we shouldn't do. He gets to make all those decisions. And it's our job not to make those decisions, but to obey what he's told us to do. Now, once we realize that, we realize that maybe we didn't always obey. All of us have chosen at some time to disobey God. I've disobeyed God before. You have your teachers have, your parents have, all of us have. The Bible says that all people have done that, and the Bible calls it sin. Sin is anytime we choose something that God doesn't want us to choose. Sometimes that means we do something we're not supposed to do. Sometimes that means we don't do something that we are supposed to do. Either way, it's called sin, and according to the Bible, it deserves punishment. When we do something wrong, we realize there's a consequence well, the consequence for sinning, according to scripture, uh, is death. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. That's in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. So God rules. He's in charge of everything. And when he made those rules, we broke them. We have sinned. But God provided for us. God sent his son. His son's name was Jesus. Jesus was fully God and fully man at the same time. He came to rescue us from the punishment for our sins. See, the Bible says we could never earn salvation. We couldn't be good enough to earn salvation. That our sin had separated us from God, and we needed someone to fix that. We needed someone to bring us and God back together. And Jesus is the only one who could do that because he was fully God and fully man at the same time. So he came and he stood in the gap between God and our sins, and he died on the cross for our sins. He gave himself as the punishment for each one of our sins. God provided exactly what we needed in the form of his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus then gives us a chance to know him. Since Jesus lived a perfect life and died on the cross for our sins, he also rose again. Y'all are very familiar with the story, I'm sure, but after three days when the women went to the tomb to see the body of Jesus after the crucifixion, the angel rolled the stone away to let the ladies in, and he told them, he is not here, he is risen, just as he said he would. Since he defeated death, we can share in his victory. God gives us the opportunity to receive the free gift of salvation. That's the best gift we could ever receive, guys. It's the best thing that 
has ever been given. As God gives us the chance to be part of his family, God forgives our sins, allows us to go to heaven one day, and makes us brothers and sisters in Christ. If you're a believer this morning, if you've trusted Jesus as Savior, the Bible says that you're my brother or sister in Christ, and we can call each other that, and that comes from Jesus. Only Jesus gives us that great privilege, that great opportunity. We then have to respond. We're going to look at something called the ABCs of becoming a Christian, and I'm going to talk about them just for a second, and then we're going to have a little video that talks about them, but we can respond to Jesus. How do we do that? How do we respond to Jesus and tell him that we want to be saved? We want to understand what it means to have salvation. Well, it's very simple. A, we have to admit that we've sinned. We have all sinned. Everyone has fallen short of God's standard. We, we've all done that. Again, like I said a minute ago, everyone from me to you, to your parents, to your teachers, to your pastor at church, everybody has sinned. We've all fallen short of God's standard. But if we, A, admit we've sinned, God can forgive us because then we, B, believe in Jesus. The good news is that God loves us and will forgive our sins if we ask him to, but we have to believe in him. That means we believe he came. We believe that he is the son of God. We believe that he did die on the cross for our sins. And then we see confess. What do we confess? We confess that Jesus is Lord. When we say he's the Lord, that means he gets to be in charge. I already told you he's in charge of everything. He made everything that exists, but we allow him to be Lord of our life. He's our Lord and Savior, meaning it's now Jesus' life. I, I, I don't want to do what I want to do anymore. I want to do every day what Jesus wants me to do. That's how you confess Jesus as Lord. Boys and girls, if you listen to these things today, and if there's something in this that you don't understand or something you have questions about, I would love to talk to you. I know your teachers would love to talk to you. Again, your parents would talk to you. Maybe your pastor at church tonight, if you go to Wednesday night church. Whatever questions you may have, we would love to answer them so that you can understand what it means to be saved. Here's that video clip, and you can watch that, and then we will have a good rest of the day together today. Thank you for letting me share with you for a few minutes this morning. Planning for your future? What if I ask you, how do you see yourself in five years? How about in 10 years? What about retirement? Sounds good, right? Well, what if I ask you, where do you see yourself after a hundred years? Most of us plan for our retirement homes at the beach. That's good. But what's even better is our heavenly home for all eternity. Jesus said in John 14, 2, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Yes, you heard that right. Jesus himself prepared a place just for you. But contrary to popular beliefs, there's really only one way to go there, and that is through Jesus. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So, are you ready to get your passport to your eternal home? Going to heaven is as easy as ABC. A. Admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Romans 3.23 says, For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. B. Believe in Jesus. John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. C. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Romans 10.9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Let me now invite you to say the prayer of salvation with me. Jesus, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. 
I believe you died on the cross to save me from my sins. I now ask you to be the Lord of my life, and I promise to commit my life to you. Amen. That's it. Remember, Jesus is the only key to your eternal mansion in heaven. If you'd like for your whole family and loved ones to get to their heavenly mansions too, don't forget to share this video and subscribe for more 5-Minute Bible Studies.